But let's just talk briefly now about the history of the periodic table. Periodic table um, was originally elements were grouped because of their similar properties. Yeah. Done by a guy named Dimitri Mendelev. M e n d e l e e v. If I'm not yep. mistaken. You know that my you know my fantasy football team, uh -huh. which I got third for the second year in a row. Yeah. By the way, this year. Um, you know what they're called. Something with Mendelev? Mendelev's Revenge. Oh, nice. And I need to revenge next time because each time I get, like, I third so. place. What's up with third place? I don't know. You get paid for first place, you know? You get paid for second place. But not third. Not third. So I had third no. place two years in a row. Yeah. Yeah. Last year because of a stupid snowstorm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So this was uh, Mendeleev's periodic table right here. This was his table, if I could see here. This is Mendeleev's periodic table. And uh, the thing that's kind of cool about his periodic table is that um, he left some blank spaces. Um, you see a blank space here, and particular here, and he predicted that those elements, because he did this in the 1800s, late 1800s, yeah. um, he said someday we're going to find these two elements. And lo and behold, lo and behold, he said there'll be some element with these particular properties, this melting point, this molar mass. And here's where it's going to fit on the periodic and this, table. And he was right. Yeah. And so it was very predictive. But he used the physical properties of the elements, their melting points and their boiling points mm -hmm. and their reactivity and these kinds masses, of things. things and like they, that. yeah, masses. And they put them all together, and that's how he made the periodic table. It's actually orientated um, in the different direction that you would be. Uh, you sh no, it's not. No, that's right. Yeah, so here's like um, sodium, lithium, sodium, right. potassium, um, rubidium. He's got silver and copper here. He didn't know what to do with them. And cesium. So he has some uh, ideas. And, of course, we now have a modern periodic table. Now, here's the two elements that he predicted in 1871. He predicted that you would find an element uh, uh, like this. Um, uh, element number 72, this is the example of germanium right here. And uh, 1871 he predicted it. And this, in 1866, 1886, pardon me, um, some scientists figured out, and these are the numbers. And if you look at this table, he almost exactly predicted each of these numbers. And uh, he was very correct. R was just like the mysterious chemical, you yeah. know, they call it. It ended up being germanium. And, and we now call it germanium. So everything was, was pretty, pretty spot on. Maybe his boiling point was a little bit off, but he was awful close on almost everything else. All right. Now, that leads us to the alphabet principle. What's that, Mr. Sam? Um, let's see here. That is the one where you're, you fill the lowest energy first. Yeah, so there's a bunch of rules. I get into that? Okay. There's a bunch of rules when we're trying to do things called electron configurations. And you might have had this last year. You might not have. Um, if you haven't, we'll talk it through. Um, what you do is you read the periodic table like a book. Left to right. You always read it from left to right and top to bottom. Turns out when we look at the periodic table, we discover the periodic table. Periodic table has um, um, it has to do, the shape of the periodic table has to do with the electrons uh, that are filled. Okay, so when we read like a book, the first element right here is hydrogen. Mm -hmm. And the first orbital that we fill, the first shape, as we talked about a little bit ago, is the, the one S shape. And then the second orbital, it's actually the same orbital, for helium is also the one S shape. So I went, I'm reading like a book, left to right, top to bottom, so boom. Now we have to skip a big space here, but let's just deal with it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> then we jump, and the second level is the 2S two two level. And then we skip this space, and then we go to 2P. Two two and what we're doing is we're figuring out in 3S. Mm -hmm. We skip this whole space through here, and we get 3P. And then we jump down to the next line of the book, if you will. Making sense so far. 4S. And then we get, now we do another thing. It's kind of odd here. Junk. This is a 3D. Now, if you yeah. like think about it, some people like to have the idea, this is 1, and then 2, and then 3, and then 4. And this is a 4, and this is a 3. Why is that? Well, because it is. I mean, there's not. Yeah. yeah the 4S just has less energy than 3D. They feel yeah, low do, energy to high. Yeah. And so we can actually read it like a book, and we can figure out this, the filling of the orbitals by just reading the periodic table like a book. Now, we should make a brief mention mm -hmm. of this spot right here and this spot right That's here. That's where the Fs fit in. Because the, actually, the 6S right here, right between here and here, if you look at your periodic table, if you have your, in fact, it wouldn't be a bad idea to get your periodic table out. Yeah. And we actually have one right here. Yeah. But if you look here, this is element 56. This is element 57, and this is element 72. There's Whoa. a big hole. There's a big hole. Yeah. So actually right through here, yeah. these elements right here, these called the lanthanides and the actinides fit. So the period Do you know table, why they put the F orbital down at the bottom like that, Mr. Bergman? Yeah, actually I do. Um, because they wanted to fit on a piece of paper. Yeah. It's 8 and a half by 11. Because that's actually the real <laughs> shape of the period table. Do we have a blank screen? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, hold on. 
So actually, here's the uh, picture, we're at wikipedia.com, uh, and you can see the expanded periodic table here. Here's, in fact, the G block right here. We talked about those. Yeah. That's a possibility. These are elements that haven't been discovered, actually. And then here's the F block, and here's the D block, and here is the P block. So this is the real periodic table. That would not fit very well in the no, 8 by 11 no. uh, piece of paper. It would be hard to use. It would be hard to use. So yeah. um, they pull particularly the F ones, lanthanium and all these other out, and so that's the reason behind all that. So that's what the periodic table should actually look like so all right all right let's do, uh, do boom, boom all right let's do some practice okay so now there's actually sort of a notation system that we use let's take the simplest element of all hydrogen all right hydrogen has one electron all right now we take a box now we write a box because that represents an orbital now in this case the very first orbital so we go back to this screen the very first orbital that we would use is the 1s orbital right Yep. I'm reading the periodic table like a book, and write 1s. Now, technically, that is a sphere, okay? But we make a box which represents any particular shape, whether it's a sphere or the dumbbell-shaped ones or the clover ones or, or whatever. Donut. Or the donut. Mm. Yeah. Mm, that's getting towards to lunch, isn't it? It is. And then we use an arrow to indicate how many electrons are in the box, okay? All right. And so if you put one electron in the box... That then is that that's the electron configuration of hydrogen. So the question at the beginning of this podcast is where are the electrons, most likely at least. And we would say that there is one electron in the 1s level. Okay? Does that make sense, guys? So that it's in the 1s level and there is one electron. There it is. All right. You know, I'm not sure we talked too much about the rules. Have we talked about the rules? Um no. You know, we should probably do that. Have we done that? Like Hun's rule and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, all those rules. So let's let's yeah, do that. Those are not our sheets. We all right, so folks, if you don't have this in your in your podcast, actually, I need to do this, don't I? If you guys don't have this slide um, or information in your um, on your paper, you need to add it. Okay, Aufbau principle. Okay, so like for the fourth time, <laughs> you want you write this thing: the Aufbau principle. The Aufbau principle says that you fill the lowest energy level first. Okay, so yep, one S, two S. 2p. 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d, 4p, and so on. Yeah. And Hund's rule says? you got to put one electron in each shape first before you can put it in two. I don't know if we mentioned this, but each little shape, each little subshell can only accommodate up to two electrons. It can each have zero, shape. one, or two. So yeah. the way I look at it is like a school bus. If you're filling a particular... Um, energy level, like let's say like the 4D, okay, there are five slots that you can put them, put them in, and we'll talk more about that in a minute, but let's say that's a school bus, and the school bus driver says, as the kids come on, you got to put one kid in each seat before you sit with two in a seat. He's a real tyrannical bus driver, you can't sit with your friend, you just have to come in, fill them up in order first, and then once all the seats are filled with one person, then you can go through and fill with two. Or, you know, might think of it this way, would you rather sit next to your friend or not? Maybe they're, all, they're like you're in third grade and they all got cooties or whatever. Oh, yeah. You know, and so they don't want to sit next to each other anyways. But, you know, when you have to sit next to them because there's no more room, mm -hmm. then you will. You know, whatever. Yeah. All right. And the Pauli exclusion principle says that um, each electron has its own unique, I'll say, address in quotation marks. Or actually, technically, it has its own set of quantum numbers, which you'll see in just a little bit. Okay? So, now let's go back to our practice. So we did hydrogen. We did hydrogen. So let's do something a little bit more complex. All right. Let's do lithium. Lithium, right below hydrogen. Not very hard, because, of course, nope. lithium has just three electrons. Yep. And so my first orbital that I would fill, let's go back to that screen. By the way, a little three there should be down on the bottom. Yeah, you're right, actually. Yep. Is that the first orbital is the 1s orbital, right? Yep. Left to right, mm -hmm. like a book. All right. And so for the 1s orbital, all right, I am going to, I, have, I can put one electron and two electrons. And by the yes. way, some people ask about the arrows. The arrow up rep represents that the electron is spinning in one direction, the arrow yep. down in the other. And is there a rule about whether you put it up first and then down? No. No. Doesn't matter. And so the, I label this, all right, 1s. But I've, I have three electrons, but. You've got to fill the 1s first, and I'm then gonna... you go on to the Because I've got three electrons. Right. I, it's like yeah, I've got three to spin. I've got to figure out where that next one goes. Yep. So we need so to move on box. to the next. And so the next box, if you look right here, is right 2S. there, is the 2s box. And so I'm going to label that 2s, and I'm going to put an arrow up. 
And by the way, just as a note, um, this is the lazy chemist arrow. Yes. All right, because I have the less T strokes. All right, <laughs> we would say 1s2. Because there's two electrons in it. And then 2s1. Because there's one electron in that one. You get that? There That's not is. too bad. No. Well, let's jump up and do, say, fluorine. Now, fluorine is element number nine on the periodic table. Mm -hmm. I'll put it in the right place there for you, I understand. Hey. All right, and the first orbital that you would fill would be the 1s. 1s. You always fill the 1s first. So I've got the two electrons. All right, the next orbital we now know is the 2s orbital, and I will fill that up, one, two. Okay. Now the next orbital, right, 2s right here, I next jump up, and I'm going to fill the 2p. 2p. Now if you look on the table, fluorine is the next to last one in the 2p. So Mr. Bergman put an X right there, or write the F. There it is. That's the spot we're looking for. All right, so what I'm going to do now, watch this, is instead of drawing one box, I'm going to draw three boxes. Right. And I'm going to put 2p on the top. Yep. Now, S's have one box. It's like this is the 2p, remember the, way that the X box, the Y box, and the Z box, if you will. Yeah. Now, I've, how many electrons do I have to spend now? Uh, you have five you need to put in there. So I've got four already spent. Right, I've got five. So this will be the more. fifth one, five. Six. Six. Seven. seven. Now, folks, and folks, notice I separated them first. Yes, one in each box first. Now, I have to, now they have to sit on the bus yep. with their friend now, or their, their, uh, the guy with the cootie. Nine. Nine. And that's yep. the answer. Yep. And we would say that that's 1s2, 2s2, and now I'll say 2p, and I count them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 2p5. 2p5. Yep. So s's have one box, p's have three boxes, d's will have five, and f's have seven. One, three, five, seven. Real so simple. let's do now something a little more complex. Let's jump way up and do vanadium. Ooh. The element of vanadium, element number 23. 23. All right. Now, I have 23 electrons to spend. So I need to fill as many boxes until I get to the 23rd electron. Well, we, it gets redundant here at this point. You do the 1s box, that's two of them spent. You do the 2s box, that's uh, two more, total of four. Now I'm going to draw the 2p box. All right, put a couple boxes in there, so I'll go one, two, three. Now the capacity of a p is six. There's two, four, six mm -hmm. of them, right? So that's a 2p6. Now, what's the next level? Next, here? we're at 3s. So if we, we finished over here at 2p, we'll go to the bottom of the next line, and we're going to go to a 3s. So, boom, the next box is a 3s, and we will fill that as well. The next box is 3P. a 3p box. So if we go back to double-check that, 3s, we skip this whole section through here, and then we get the 3p. And this will get filled too. 1, 2, 3 four, five, six. And actually, what are we up to here? That's the three P. Uh, we're up to 18, 18. there. Yep. So we've gotten to 18. Now the magic number for vanadium is 23. Right. So now we go to the next we're line. Next 4S. So now we jump down here to the 4S orbital. And so we draw another S S's always get one box. And that will be filled. So we're at 20 mm -hmm. electrons, yep. right? Now I have the next level, oops, wrong direction, and I want to now fill the 3D. Now this, this width here, if you look at it, is 10 wide. If you were to count 1, 2, 3, this here is 10 electrons, yep. or 10 atoms. And so this is going to be a 5 boxer. Yes, because 2 electrons per box. So now I've got 5, and how many do I have to we spend? We have 3 more. So I'm going to put 1 in each, 1, 2, Three are 21, 22, and 23. Yep. Now the electron configuration, configuration of that will be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. You're filling each of them except for the last one. 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d3. Mm -hmm. Now I actually could have told you that it was uh, 3d3 without having to do the whole thing, though. Yeah, that's where I always start. Uh, it's actually the best place to start. So yeah. if you find vanadium on your periodic table, it'll be right here. You might notice it's 3D, and if you were to count them over, 1, uh, 2, 3. Right. So the last electrons would end up at 3D3. 3D3. And if while I'm at that, let's oh, take yeah. this one down here, and um, this is the element um, AT. Astatine. Astatine. That is now, either the rarest or the second most rare element there? on Earth. I, I can't remember think which. I that. Yeah. Okay, and astatine, I can actually predict what the last electrons are going to fill mm -hmm. for that one without having to do 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p6, 5s2, 4d10, 5p6, 6s2, 5d10. That's without doing all that, Fs. oh, I forgot my 4s. Yeah. This would be 6p5. That's the end. Then there's a bunch of stuff there's before There's a stuff before it. Now, how do I know that? Because if you really think about this, um, on the periodic table, this is going to be the P1 block, if you will. This is P2, this is P3, this is by columns. This is P4, and this is P5. Always. 
So acetine would end in 6P5, but I could jump right up here to the 4, whoever this is, a bromine, I think, isn't it? Yep. This is going to be 4P5. So you can use it. It's almost like a grid where you just kind of read the thing. Now, you'd, this, of course, works because this, of course, is the fourth period. That doesn't work with the Ds. But if I wanted to grab a 5D one right here, hopefully this is not one of the exceptions. I don't think five it is. 5D. Fourth Six. from the end? Yeah. Uh, iridium. No, it's not. Okay, good. Yep. So this is what? This is going to end in 5P, no, 5D, um, 6, right? Seven. Seven? Yep. Yeah, that's seven. Okay. Good.